I am honored to speak today on behalf of the President and the rest of the Executive Board of the European Association of Archaeologists, who are very sorry that they are unable to attend WAC this year due to the unfortunate coincidence scheduling of our own annual meeting. I send their regrets and their greetings. Archaeology has a long history in Europe, uh, but it is a history of national traditions and insights. A pan-European vision of European archaeology was left to the few and the extraordinary, Oscar Montelius, Gordon Child, and their ilk. The European Association of Archaeologists was only founded in 1994, so we're actually nearly 10 years too young to be commenting on the last 30 years. Uh, nevertheless, I hope these thoughts are dra uh, drawn from the EA's past, uh, present, and goals for the future are helpful and interesting. The impulse to found the EAA sprang from the same hopeful and forward-thinking cultural moment out of which the European Union was birthed. Our founding principles reflect the spirit of unity and optimism alive at the time. To promote the development of archaeological research and the exchange of archaeological inf information in Europe, to promote the management and interpretation of European archaeological heritage, to promote proper ethical and scientific standards for archaeological work, to promote the interests of professional archaeology in Europe, and to promote cooperation with other organizations with similar aims. Since then, the EAA has developed in leaps and bounds, drawing in archaeologists, both professional and academic, and heritage professionals from across Europe. As well as bringing in colleagues from neighboring regions, and like myself, those who live and work further abroad, but who study Europe's past. At this point, we have about 2,200 members from 50 different countries. Since 1999, we have held consultative status with the Council of Europe, giving us a platform from which to advocate for policies supporting the protection of cultural heritage and the promotion of archaeology and heritage in EU member countries. For 22 years, we have aimed to be a society which both promotes and represents archaeology, archaeologists, and heritage professionals within our own expansive and expanding definition of Europe. Moreover, we actively involve ourselves with those social and political problems that affect archaeology just as they affect the wider world. In less than a year, for instance, we have had to react with public statements and actions to terrorist attacks in France, the UK's Brexit referendum, and recently the leadership crisis in Turkey. At this point, we would particularly like to acknowledge and celebrate our many Turkish members who hosted our annual conference in 2014 in Istanbul and who are currently working within a difficult and at times hostile political situation. Among our successes as a society, we count our highly ranked journal, our widely read newsletter, our newly launched monograph series, our increasing membership and attendance at our conferences, our formal links with national and international archaeological societies and heritage organizations, and our successful efforts to improve European heritage policy. As we look to the future, however, and as has been noted in the abstract for this plenary session, the position of archaeology and the significance of protecting cultural heritage seem less, less secure and less sure than in previous years. Despite the widespread public appreciation and cultural prestige of ancient remains in Europe, it is undeniable that a considerable segment of the population feels a certain aversion to heritage management, particularly when this is identified most strongly with bureaucratic structures designed to prevent things from happening. This situation differs from country to country, but a priori conservationism has caused, albeit indirectly, uh, a public disaffectation towards heritage and archaeology. The Great Recession of 2008 and its after effects have only exacerbated these problems. In addition, the recession has had dramatic effect on employment and prospects for commercial activity, uh, affecting largely professional archaeology and heritage, which are frankly some of the weakest links in the archaeological system in Europe. Moreover, the changing political and social contexts in modern Europe look very different to the Europe of the early and mid-90s, with optimism about the European project replaced by cynicism, and a spirit of unification confronted with reborn and politically empowered ethno-nationalist movements in many countries. The British referendum to leave the EU has shaken our sense of, of unity, and archaeologists are only one community trying to suss out the consequences and the best path, path forward. And yet we're not willing to relinquish our ideals or adjust them downwards in some sort of pessimistic pragmatism. As our new president argued recently, instead of yielding to those negative pressures, we hope to position the EAA as a bulwark against them, espousing new ambitions for archaeology, promoting activism within the archaeological and heritage communities, 
uh, working towards a closer integration of archaeologists and heritage professionals, and working to increase the value and profile of archaeological and cultural heritage and the necessity of protecting it. In looking to the future, the EAA, both on the short and the long term, uh, is attempting to plan for an even more inclusive and empowered archaeology and heritage sector in Europe. We aspire to become more representative, expanding our organizational remit to greater proportion of European archaeological community and making more liberal use of democratizing technologies like Twitter and open repositories to better represent our community and engage with individuals amongst it and the work that they're producing. In particular, we are aware that the younger generation of archaeologists and heritage professionals are among the most precariously employed and in need of institutional support. We are currently building the framework of what we hope will be a vibrant and supportive student network within the EAA, and we look forward to planning our future with the future of the current student and very early career generation in mind. We are also building on the political endeavors of the last two decades. We see it as a key part of our mission to continue to actively promote the value of all aspects of archaeological research and the research of related disciplines. And we hope to provide meaningful contributions and solutions to debates around the big issues facing humanity. In order to achieve these aims in the future, we have envisioned for ourselves an ambitious and vocal role within the future European project. We are seeking a more central place, both figuratively, uh, but also literally within the offices of the EU. Uh, in, the, in the dialogue concerning European cultural and intellectual life and civil society, as well as a more visible and active position within European heritage policy formulation. Moreover, through greater public engagement, we believe the EAA can increase its relevance to the European project, and we are confident that archaeology, archaeologists, and the EAA itself can play a growing role within it. Finally, and perhaps most relevant to this audience, a core element of our future planning lies in ever stronger collaboration with our peers within Europe and beyond. Archaeology and heritage are international disciplines, and we see no way of ethically moving forward without wider collaboration and consultation. In the same way we are building on our existing ties to heritage organizations throughout Europe, we celebrate our developing relationships with international archaeology and heritage bodies, our increasingly close ties with the World Archaeology Congress, as well as our developing links to societies representing and promoting allied fields, anthropology, architecture, science and technology studies, etc. To end on a personal observation, as an American with a European doctorate and research profile who is now based in Australia, I would like to observe that while we archaeologists of different nationalities may sometimes use different methodologies, and while our stakeholders and the impact and political implications of our work can be profoundly different, in both WAC and the EAA, I personally have always found a shared ideal to conduct our research and practice to the highest ethical standards and to use our knowledge of the past to make the present and future better. Thank you very much.